I feel very vulnerable because I'm going to talk about why I want my kids to fail. <laughs> and okay, it's not because I'm a bad father. Um, I feel vulnerable because I'm going to talk not about the work I do, so I'm, I'm a nutcase when it comes to tools, business tools. I want people to use business tools, change the way they work. Um, I know how to talk about that, but I'm Swiss. I don't know how to talk about myself and, and, and the secrets. I mean, it's not for nothing that we invented the numbered bank account in Switzerland. Okay. <laughs> and I'm Swiss and I'm not funny. And I'm happy you're laughing. I'm very thankful for that. <laughs> wow, I'm going to come back. A lot of the speakers were very funny and that, I love that kind of entertainment. So I'm going to talk about why I want my kids to fail. And what I mean with that is we always see the kind of shiny faces of success. And I'm guilty of that. I mean, I had some success. Um, I tweet a lot about the opportunities I have to speak here. I got 1,000 product managers to use our new tool, the Value Proposition Canvas. I tweet about our offices, our off-sites. So this is Switzerland. <laughs> this is where we work. We come together with our, our team. But what we don't see behind this is that actually to get to a point where you can live your passion and work really on the stuff you want to work, well, there's a lots of not-so-shiny stuff going on. It's a lot of failure, a lot of risk we take. And I want to talk a little bit about that because I want my kids to experience failure a lot so they can get to do what they really feel passionate about. Okay? So here are my kids. <laughs> Malina on the left, seven years old. Latif on the right, 11 years old. You can guess who made the drawing. It was Malina. <laughs> I asked her, well, isn't your brother a bit small? <laughs> Her answer was, oopsie. <laughs> okay. So why would I want them to fail? Not because I'm a bad parent, because I have hopes that they lose their fear of failure. I mean, for me, it was fearful to talk about you know, what I'm going to talk about a little bit later. My personal little failures are not particularly interesting, but I think that shaped me and, and led me to the passion I have today. So that's a fear. So fear of failure, right, on the left-hand side there, and the number of failures you experience. I think the more you fail, the more you lose this fear, right? I've been on stage a lot of times. I still have my fear, but, you know, I, I go up there, and now it's becoming normal because I know kind of what, what are the things that are going to happen. I try new things that I know can't be done, probably, because... I know there's not that much risk in trying new things other than, you know, looking stupid, but who cares? Right? So I think this is very important that we try to experiment a lot. So I want to quote my friend Steve Blank here, who's a serial entrepreneur turned educator, who says, do you know what we call a failed entrepreneur in Silicon Valley? Experienced. So if you don't, if you never failed, you don't know what failure means, you don't know how to do better, you can't learn. Right? You need to fail to learn. Now, we always emphasize, yeah, you don't want to talk about failure, you want to talk about learning. It's the fear of failure that's holding us back sometimes from experimenting. It's not the fear of learning. It's not. <laughs> right? So, next piece here is, I think it's important if we keep the, fear, the failures experienced on that axis, and here we have the ability to explore. I think the less we fear, the more we fail, the more we actually can discover stuff it's exciting to do we can discover our passions and we don't fear working on the stuff we're passionate about i mean i have a lot of friends i used to work um, in consulting with uh, people in private banks and we had this image this brand image that we were cool we were innovating and a lot of our friends were in private banking then and they said i want to do the same thing i want i want to do this but none of them joined us because they feared Failure of losing you know, the great jobs they had, the money they were earning, and maybe not being able to buy the next Ducati monster or whatever. But they were desiring a different life. And they didn't move to that because they feared failure. So here's my, one of my favorite um, authors when I was a late teenager, college. You must be ready to burn yourself in your own flame. How could you rise anew if you have not first become ashes? So I think many of us here, we go through this process of, wow, trying something that can't be done, 
we look stupid in front of others. <laughs> we try out things that people will tell you, why are you wasting your time? Why do you want to become a you know, politician and <laughs> run for office? <laughs> it's amazing. So, in simpler words, I can move on here to the next slide. You may be disappointed if you fail, but you're doomed if you don't try. And again, why are there certain things that we don't try? It's fear of failure, isn't it? Very often, at least in my case. And I don't want my kids to fear trying out something that could be their real passion. And you know, I just I was talking to my wife two days ago, and she I was asking for the drawings. Could my kids do the drawings for my presentation? She said, she said uh, you know, Latif, he, he couldn't draw. He was so stressed out because of school. He's 11 years old. <laughs> he fears failure. So I probably fail. My wife failed. We failed together in kind of transmitting this message that failure doesn't matter. Even if he he's pretty good at school, but even if he had to repeat a year, a year, right? That's crazy, this kind of fear. So, I think we're talking a lot more about failure these days in companies. So there's this conference called FailCon where people talk about failure. <laughs> Never been there, but I know about it. Um, Vinod Kosla, one of my favorite entrepreneurs turned VCs, he says, I've failed more times than I've succeeded. But we don't know that often. Now, in business, it's becoming a popular theme, right? Failure. But what's, what we don't talk about that much is the little failures in our lives that lead us to do more passionate stuff. So it's only, we're only starting to get there to talk about failure. And I think the most important thing is, why don't we or why can't we teach our kids how to fail successfully? It's hard. And when I heard that my son is afraid of going to school and doing the next test and having to work, I mean, he... He's just as lazy as I was, but still. Do you know how to teach failure to your kids, to your teammates, to people you work with? Do we know how to teach that? How to fail successfully? I don't think so. I think it's pretty hard, but I don't think we know. And one of the reasons is <laughs> because what's the image kind of put up there? No, even I'm guilty of it with my little tweets. I tweet the nice parts because I don't want to look stupid, you know. I, didn't, I lost my way in Providence. I couldn't find the way to the conference. <laughs> <laughs> in any city, big or small, happens all the time. So, I, you know, look at these things and I feel stupid building, you know, having a business that's not a billion dollars worth. How stupid is that, right? Those kind of things. It's crazy, right, that you feel those kind of things sometimes. So, I just want to talk for the next five minutes about my personal little failures that led me to be able to do what I'm really passionate about, passionate about tools, and passionate about writing business books, or more drawing them, designing them, so we make very visual business books. And I'm passionate about bringing business tools to, to organizations. Like, I was amazed to hear that it's used in the U.S. Army, right? It's, wow, it's pretty crazy. So, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about these failures that I think led me to a life that I can, you know, live on, working on passionate, stuff I'm passionate about. So, before doing that, I want you, just for 30 seconds, to write down one of your big failures or that you experienced as a failure at the time and that positively shaped your life later on. I want you to do that. Just a little exercise. Write that down. I'll give you 30 seconds right now. Think of a failure in your life that turned out to be, wow, I learned something from that. It, had a, it <clears throat> led to a positive path. Because I didn't get that job, now I'm actually working on meaningful stuff. Well, write something down. Just 30 seconds. 30 seconds. If you don't have anything to write down, you're not living a very interesting life. <laughs> if it's in your head, it's fine. <laughs> Got it? Okay. So, 
Now to the boring stuff, my little failures. So my kids drew me going to school here. This is in Switzerland. We have a thing called gymnasium that's between um, probably the first year of college. It's not it's a little bit more than high school. Well, I failed the last year. I failed the last year, and I failed school, well, partially because I didn't go to school that often. <laughs> but the consequences taught me some things. This was one of my first bigger failures, at least at the time it fell big, and I learned something from it, that I can fail, now I get to class with my beach volleyball partner, <laughs> and I can train more. <laughs> it was a positive side, <laughs> which was a nice side of life. But what I really learned was, well, there are consequences in life. I didn't go to school that often at the time, and my parents didn't know, oh shoot, this is recorded, right? I'll find out. But I always got by, right? Until this point where one teacher said no. It was a teacher, she didn't like me, <laughs> but she drew a line. So I learned their consequences, right? But it was hard to deal with it because nobody taught me to deal with that kind of failure. So then I went to university, I went to business school. Turned out I still like beach volleyball. And I was often on the beach volleyball court. And I failed the first year. How else, right? First year of business school, so I had to change. So I did political science, and it turned out that was the best education I could ever get. Because I learned how to think. Okay, so I learned how to read Bourdieu, <laughs> Pierre Bourdieu, thinking about why institutions become what they are. And the reason I think this was important in my life is because I started to learn how to question things, and that's, I think, what influenced me to start you know, questioning how people do work in business, that we can work differently, that we can use business tools. I make the connection back to those days where I learned how to question things and not take them as normal. So I actually did go back to business school after finishing political science, and then after that, I had a job interview with McKinsey. It was a breakfast meeting at 6 o'clock. I did not know that restaurants are even open at 6 o'clock at the time. <laughs> And this is how it felt <laughs> after an hour. So if you don't know what this is, it's a steamroller. <laughs> and this is me. <laughs> so after an hour, <laughs> I was done. Um, needless to say, I was not prepared well enough, and I never got into McKinsey. But turns out, I got to do a second job interview with Yves Pinier, who became my co-author of a book that sold a million times. And that allows me today to work on stuff that I'm passionate about. That little thing had an influence on my life. Maybe I would have had an interesting life and could have worked on passionate stuff going through McKinsey as well, but here I got to meet a fabulous person who I could work with and I still work with today. So that failure, that it was really frustrating. I felt stupid after that job interview, you can't imagine. But it opened up a door to my career today, to what I do. Then I went on um, to Thailand with my wife, and we had one kid then that was Latif. And I, I helped build up a global NGO, a not-for-profit not organization. And I was the person in charge for creating the processes, doing the accounting, and so on. Now, I learned there that I'm never going to do accounting again. I should have known, since at business school, that was the topic that I didn't really like and kind of sunk me in the exams. But what I did learn there is that during that time, I learned a lot about what I'm not good at and which team members I need to bring in to do the stuff that I can't do. I have an allergy against admin. <laughs> so now I have a great co-founder, Peter Sondrecker, besides Alan Smith, who really you know, keeps the company running on the organizational side and probably keeps us out of jail. Because we don't, we, we actually, you know, file the reports that we need to file. So this was um, an interesting period, but I also learned something then. Working for this NGO, I met the greatest facilitators that you can imagine. I, I was in northern Thailand, and I was working with people who facilitate communities and who teach them how to find solutions on their own and they would let them struggle and not tell them what to do if they couldn't come up with a solution on their own. So I really learned about facilitation and I apply that in business today. 
Here's another one, um, public speaking. I have a terrible fear of public speaking, and I've failed a lot, but it didn't kill me, and I forced myself to do it again and again and again because I was getting used to this kind of failure until I found my style getting other people to work during the session. So that was pretty fun. Now, last thing, and I'll stop here, is I still like trying out new things that probably you know, are just doomed to fail. We created a new book. We thought, you know, value proposition design, let's not just make it visual. We'll have an online part. Can we repeat the success we had the, with the first one? I don't know, but we're trying. And we're trying not to do the same thing, but something new, because we know what's still broken. First book changed something, it was visual, but we still think we could push the boundaries. And then the right-hand side is the logo of our company, Strategizer. We're trying to change the way people do business. We think we can create the SAP of strategy, change the way people work when it comes to business models and value propositions, not just with the tools, and that's already amazing to see how they're adopted, but getting people to use software to do that so we can really leverage the brilliance and intelligence of people in, in, in the organizations. And I could do all this because I failed quite a bit. I gave you some of the failures. Um, I want my kids not to fear failure. I want them to learn how to fail successfully so they can do things that they really enjoy and that they can become Biff storytellers. And you know, frankly, I admire how some of the people who are here change the world. I want my kids to be able to do that, and that's only if they don't fear failure. Thank you very much.